Elon Musk found a Neuralink in July of 2016 with the extremely ambitious goal of successfully creating a bridge between our brains and computers. From helping paralyzed individuals to potentially downloading information into our brains, Neuralink promises to revolutionize the way we think, work, and progress forward. But aside from a few presentations here and there, we haven't heard much about the company's progress. So what happened to Neuralink? Well, starting off, though Neuralink has several applications in our day-to-day -day life, Elon Musk emphasized that the primary goal of Neuralink is to quote, solve important brain and spine problems with a seamlessly implanted device. In other words, the primary goal of Neuralink is to help with neurological medical conditions as opposed to transforming our brains into supercomputers, though that may happen as a byproduct. Elon Musk believes that nearly everyone has some degree of neurological shortcomings, especially as we age. This may be as mild as degrading vision and hearing, or as serious as paralysis and brain damage. However, despite the extent of this neurological damage, at the end of the day, all of the signals in our brains are just electrical signals. So, theoretically, fixing these electrical signals should resolve many of the aforementioned issues. And that's basically the foundation of Neuralink. With that being said, let's take a look at what Neuralink has developed thus far, starting with the implant. Originally, the implant was designed to sit behind your ear, kind of like a hearing aid. But this summer, Neuralink updated the implant to sit on the top of the skull. By making this transition, Neuralink is able to eliminate the wires that run from the device to the entry point into the skull. Aside from this, if you have decently sized hair, no one will even know you have an implant. Though the device is only 23mm by 8mm, it is said to have 1024 channels per link, which is 100 times better than similar neural devices. Musk claims that the current device is capable of several simple biometric tasks, such as reading blood pressure and temperature. In the future, however, he hopes to expand the features to be able to detect potential heart attacks and even strokes. Moving on to how one would actually get the implant, the process is actually quite simple as it's all completed by a high precision surgical robot. Nonetheless, for most of us, this is still a very scary idea. The Neuralink N1 implant contains up to 3072 electrodes per array, which is spread across 96 threads. Each of these electrodes is thinner than one hair follicle, so the procedure shouldn't be too intrusive. Musk believes that general anesthesia is sufficient and that the implant will be an outpatient operation. Anyways, during the surgery, the robot will scan your brain in order to circumnavigate blood vessels, and it will essentially poke the electrodes into your brain in the appropriate places. The robot is capable of inserting 6 threads per minute, and considering that each implant has up to 96 threads, the operation itself could take as little as 16 minutes, but really no more than half an hour to one hour. Once the implant is up and running, all of the data it collects can actually be exported through a USB-C cable. Now, what's actually really interesting is that the USB-C cable isn't a bottleneck as you might expect. Our brains receive an astounding amount of information every single second, with some research suggesting that our brains receive 11 million bits of data every single second from our senses, mostly from our eyes. However, our brains are extremely efficient at compressing all of this incoming data. In fact, the same research suggests that the 11 million bits of incoming data is compressed down to less than 50 bits. Moreover, the N1 implant is only reading a very, very small portion of the neural activity occurring every second. So, a USB-C cable shouldn't run into any problems anytime soon. Anyways, once the surgery is complete, maintenance is pretty simple. Just charge the implant every night using a provided magnetic charger. Though, it might be weird to attach a charger to your head every night. That's all cool and all, but all of that is theoretical. How much progress has the N1 implant actually made? Well, the latest update we got from Neuralink was the pig demo we saw over the summer. During the demo, Elon Musk walked us through a state of three pigs. The first pig did not have an implant, and he was basically a control as to how a regular, happy, healthy pig behaves. As for the second pig, at that point, the pig had had the implant for about two months, and the pig was shown to also be happy and healthy though it wasn't interested in cooperating at the start. Using the second pig, the team showcased how the Neuralink implant was able to sense streams of incoming information, 
by playing a beeping sound every time the pig's senses were provoked. Moving on to the third pig, this pig was also more of a control pig that showcased that the implant could be safely removed without any damage to the pig's health. In addition to showcasing that the implant could be removed, this demonstration also showed that one could upgrade their implant if they so desired. After the live demos with the three pigs was completed, Elon Musk presented us with a video of a pig with an implant walking on a treadmill. The video reveals how the data from the implant is able to quite accurately predict where the four legs of the pig were heading. After the demos, Elon Musk started to discuss the possibility of using Neuralink to not only read brain activity, but also write to the brain. He details that there are three major requirements that must be met before actually implementing such a function, the first of which being precise control of the electric field. The brain is no doubt a very sensitive organ, and as a result, any current that is being stimulated into the brain should likewise be quite precise. On top of this, any sort of stimulation device should not only be precise, but also have the ability to output a wide range of different currents. Our brain controls a variety of different activities each and every second, and different activities require different levels of stimulation. For instance, sprinting is not going to require the same amount of stimulation as blinking. And even if a given device is capable of both of these functions, the impact of the brain stimulation must be monitored over a long period of time in order to ensure that it doesn't create any lasting damage. With that being said, Neuralink has made some progress in this realm as well. In this same presentation, Elon Musk uses a two-photon microscopy to show off how the implant can stimulate brain activity. Though he does showcase how the implant can stimulate various portions of the brain, the subsequent reaction to the stimulation was not shown, likely because the stimulation was so subtle that it didn't cause any noticeable physical reactions, such as a leg jerking or something like that. As you can see, the technology is still very much in its infancy, but the N1 implant did receive FDA breakthrough device designation in July, and consequently, they're looking to move over to human clinical trials as quickly and safely as possible. Initially, after the safety of the device is proven, the goal is to conduct clinical trials using individuals who are quadriplegic and paraplegic. As the demo on the treadmill showed, the N1 implant can be used to predict the path of the pig's limbs. If this technology can be transferred over to humans as well, the Neuralink team hopes to understand what a person wants to do with their limbs just by reading their brain activity. If they are able to successfully accomplish this, then a potential idea is to place another implant at the base of the spinal cord, which can relay the individual's desired actions to their limbs, thus bypassing the paralyzation. There are actually similar devices out there already that accomplish such functions. For instance, there are actually several prosthetic arms and legs that utilize the nerve endings that are still intact to control the prosthetic. But of course, this requires that the nerve endings are still intact and working. Nonetheless, these prosthetics showed that it is possible to read neural activity and translate them into appropriate robotic actions. Thus, Neuralink's plan is actually not that far off, and we may see them succeed in helping paralyzed individuals within the next decade or two. At the same time, Neuralink also plans to translate this technology to other bodily organs. For example, by getting a better understanding of how the brain reads and processes vision and hearing, the Neuralink team may be able to restore vision and hearing, or even use cameras and mics in the place of one's eyes and ears. Though there is still a very long way to any of these applications, these are the more realistic outcomes that could potentially be reached within the next few decades. But what about the crazy sci-fi stuff that Musk has hinted at here and there? Like, if you can't beat them, join them. Despite that apparently being the mission of the company, at this point in time, they're really not pursuing anything crazy, like creating virtual reality using Neuralink or providing us with supercomputer level computational power. They are hopeful that one day, they or some other similar company will be able to provide such superpowers. But in the meantime, they're just planning on sticking to reversing impairments. And that's what happened to Neuralink. Do you guys think Musk's vision with Neuralink is possible? Or is it just some blown out fantasy? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are excited, but also scared about such technology. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.